Assalamualaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Is it true that a jinn can marriage connect with the human soul? With the what? Can jinn marriage or connect with the human soul? Connect with the human soul? No, the jinn can come to the human body. So just like we talked about every other possession, of course they come and they possess the person. They come as a, as a counsel, as a guide, a spirit guide, all these words they have now. They're coming as you know just somebody to give advice and inspiration. That's why the meditation is so powerful when done correctly through the Naqshbandiya way is to bring an energy to begin to burn that. And if you're having a difficulty then you know you try even harder so that you can burn any sort of negative frequency between you and the soul. And those whom they're attracted by these creatures or creatures are attracted by them then they come and they fall in love with them, they want to be around them, they're attracted by them and then causes a, again a difficulty upon that person because that, that creature has now attached itself to that individual. And that becomes like in the alien movies abductions and molestations and inappropriate conduct because that's their world, they're free to do what they want, they're not believing servants. And all you can describe it is that you'd have to think they're like humans and if people live in an environment that's just open and free and they don't care, well you could imagine then 20 people coming through your window and violating you all night long. So spirituality and spiritual maturity is as soon as you get a guide the first thing the guide is teaching you is put this protection on and understand how to wash, how to keep your energy, how to seal your home, that stop all these you know homeless people coming through your window. So the first thing is you fortify the, the servant on how to cleanse themselves, fortify themselves, put their ruqya on, uh, do their prayers, do their salatul wudu, then fortify their home, close your windows at night, all of these practices so that you can begin to push out anything that's there that has occupied your space and definitely push out anything trying to enter into that space. And again when you meditate and you, you make your tafakkur and and the connection with your shaykh, the presence of your shaykh becomes very powerful upon you and your home because you're continuously in tafakkur, continuously in support, continuously participating, continuously having the zikr on. So then you are replicating the shaykh's light upon yourself and what we call grafting. So it means that light of the shaykh is being spread, is being spread until it's spreading upon that servant. And now that servant is in the muhabbat of the shaykhs and Naqshbandi shaykhs, they've practiced on how to keep their hudur and the presence of the shaykh. As a result the fana is opening that the light of the shaykh is upon that servant. And that light is their shaykh's light, shaykh's light, shaykh light and all of that is the Muhammadan light inshaAllah.